good what's good youtube i'm running around excited again that's good um how you doing people um so okay i'm gonna be building on what rastafariism is and just want to show you its origins right it has nothing to do with um a bloodline or anything like that all right it's all of a, it's all a belief just like another a religion right that's all it is right that's somebody came up with the idea of uh, this religion so that's all it is it's just a doctrine right got nothing to do with bloodline um genealogy nothing like that right it's just like saying jesus is gonna come back right it's the same thing all right so the true story of rastafari and shout out to the new york review of books your use um so let's go so Le leonard p howell the founding father of rastafari movement it's a movement okay i mean it's an organization it has nothing to do with bloodline it has nothing to do with genealogy it has nothing to do with birth right it has nothing to do with um inheritance all right it's just an idea not an idea not a doctrine right like it's no different from buddhism from christianity you know what i'm saying however the ways and the lifestyle of the so-called rasta right that's that's indigenous lifestyle that's um that's indian lifestyle that's west indian lifestyle eating off the eating from the earth you know what i'm saying the lux the lux is maya we all know the lux is maya all right that's from the americas all right that has nothing to do with africa going back to africa or anything all right okay let's get to it in the postcard view of jamaica bob marley cast a long shadow though he has been dead for 35 years legendary the legendary reggae musician is easily the most recognizable jamaican in the world right and this is what they do you know they use one um entertainer to push this doctrine you know what i'm saying but shout out to bob marley this is not to tear down his legacy or anything you know what i'm saying he did what he did he did well he did good but as i said it has nothing to do with the land it has nothing to do with blood ties it's just a doctrine it's just a religion and everybody is free to choose free to believe what they want to believe in I'm saying I'm not here to tear down your religion, your religious beliefs. All I'm here to say is that this has nothing to do with an actual bloodline, an actual inheritance. You know what I'm saying? It's just a doctrine, right? And not everybody who wears a, wears locks is into this doctrine, right? Because the locks is um um originates in the Americas. All right. If you look on the Mayan, the Mayan walls, if you look on the walls of um, Mexico, you know what I'm saying? And this is also a correction too. Like the other day I did a, a, a live stream of Darkman X and I said Horace Butler, but it wasn't Horace Butler, it was Leonard Powell, all right? So Leonard Powell is the proper, is the right name. That who, that's the one who um, created the rest of our religion, all right? All right, so let's get to it. <clears throat> so, the primary figure in a global brand often associate protest music, laid back one love, positivity, and pot smoking, counterculture. And since Marley was the adherent of Rastafari, right, the social and spiritual movement that began, see, it's a movement. It's not a bloodline. It's not, it has nothing to do with family, you know what I'm saying? Or genealogy. You know what I'm saying? It's a doctrine. The social and spiritual movement that began in, in this Caribbean island nation in the 1930s. His music and reggae more generally have in many ways come to be synonymous with Rastafari in the popular Im imagination. For Jamaica's leaders, Rastafari has been an important aspect of the country's global brand. Alright, so it's just, it's just, it's just, um, they use it to market the, 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 the brand Jamaica. As I told you, Jamaica is a corporation, right? And the, 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 these these corporate um, um, CEOs, they use anything to market a company, all right? And Rastafari is one of the, these marketing strategies they use, all right? 
struggling with high, sky high unemployment, vast inequality, and extreme poverty, crippling debt burns from the IMF, right? I showed you the other day that Jamaica is on the Security and Exchange Commission, right? That they put up the country for sale in a prospectus, all right? Agreements haven't helped the situation. They have relied on brand Jamaica, the government's uh, explicit marketing push beginning in the 1960s to attract tourist dollars and foreign investment to the island. All right, you hear that? Foreign investment to the island. So they could they could dissect up the land, right? And 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 um take the people's um resources, all right? The government backed tourist industry has long encouraged visitors to come to Jamaica and feel all right, okay? And in 2015 the country decriminalizes decriminalized marijuana, right? Our ancestral herb they, they decriminalize because they, they criminalize it, right? Which is an ancestral herb, creating a further draw for foreigners seeking an authentic Jamaican experience. So people, they're playing with, you, they're, they're playing with your um, intelligence, all right? The Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, J J JIPO, which is located in the same building as the government larger Jamaican promotion agency, JAMPRO, in Kingston works to protect the country's name and trademarks from registration by outside entities with no connection to Jamaican goods or and services. Meanwhile, brand Jamaica has been exploited globally too, with billions of, of dollars of revenue generated each year from Rasta themed products. All right, clothing, headphones, and to pipes. But I'm gonna get to the meat and potatoes, right? I'm gonna get to where I began, all right? So let me see. The original Rastafari settlement, known as Pinnacle, occupied a large expansion of mountainous land from Sligoville Road to Rio Cobra River, with spectacular 360 degree views. Today, looking out across lush green and deep brown canopies that led all the way, that lead all the way down to Spanish Town, one can see Kingston. The Jamaican capital, further still, newer house, sit along the winding roads of Pinnacle's highest point. So that's where it originated. Now let's get to the, the um, meats, the meat and potatoes, right? Pinnacle's story began in 1930 in British rule Jamaica, when a street preacher, pay attention, when a street preacher named Le Leonard Percival Howell, 1898 to 1891. 1981 gained a large following among the lower classes so you see they always come it's just like with christianity they they they, they, they um they always target the poor people you know what i'm saying inspired by revivalist and ethiopianist movement that took hold in jamaica from the late 18th century and drawing on uh, an africanism distinct you know what i'm saying so they this is not our culture people this is not the, the island's um, um, uh, culture, right? Originally, this, this was adopted, adapted, distinct from European Christianity. So it's just another um, religion competing with, a, with, with another religion, all right? Oil sought to create a spiritual practice that would also offer a political voice to the island's downtrodden workers, okay? Oil Spinner could originally intended as a temporary community for those uh, hoping to repatriate to Ethiopia. Mind you now, you're going to repatriate to Ethiopia, but you have no blood ties to Ethiopia, right? You have no ancestors, you have no co cousins, right? Soon became home hundreds, at times thousands of Jamaicans. It was a place where members of the underclass could, go, you see? So it's all about the poor people who doesn't know better to go in the absence of institutional support that plagued a large number of Jamaicans descended from formerly enslaved. But they're not saying who we, we for, they're not saying who the enslaved were because there's a difference between slave and an enslaved, okay? Who had few rights, continue to face systematic discrimination. That's why I tell you, our grandmothers, right? They had to change their status from Indian, right? To Negro, some to mulatto, okay? After slavery was abolished in British Empire in 1834, free villages settlements founded by various non-conformist denominations 
independent of control of the land owning and planter class offered some assistance to formerly enslaved you hear that but throughout the following century so this was well before even independence right as i said we were already free it's just that they had a colonial structure and they, because being being indian wasn't favorable okay many black jamaican continued to live in abject poverty and were forced to depend on wealthy lighter skinned land owners for their livelihood control of one's land hear that and the real marker of freedom and in 1930s struggling against unyield colonial taxation and land owners who were unwilling to sell them land okay your own land these colonizers come and want to sell you your own land okay in 1938 a century after emancipation these rootless conditions led to the island's wider labor uprising okay so remember the rebellions there you go that further catalyzed the drive for independence from the island's British overlords. Still not independent, or so-called independent, right? It's still, the, 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 the queen is still the head of state. Around this time, the emerging labor movement who led to the founding of two main uh, parties, People National Party and Jamaican, uh, and Jamaica Labor Party, okay? So those are controlled by the British, those parties, okay? In 1930, and Howard managed to buy or lease land, estimated range from a few hundred to a couple thousand acres, and details remain hazy from Albert Chang, a prominent member of Jamaican Chinese community and the owner of Grocery Franchise. It's not clear whether Chang supported Howard's cause. Okay, so he was being funded. They're gonna say it's not clear. All right, the Rastafarians are not essential religious sect, wrote John Car Caradine, a reporter of Jamaica Main newspaper, but. I want to get to where he was um, under Marcus Garvey. I have that information as well. Even before Pinnacle was established, Howard and other street preachers had been moving away from Christianity. Christianity, so they were Christians before, who had a radical new focus. After in after the 1930 crowning of Ethiopia's emperor, Haley Selassie I, born to fire, Maconan inherited preachers inherent preachers in Kingston and the adjacent parishes celebrated the divinity of Ras Divine Tafari, right? Who at his coronation as emperor took on titles Kings of Kings, Lord of Lords, that were reserved in the Bible for the second coming of Christ. Rastafari Howell declared that was the rightful ruler of all black Jamaicans. So you see, there's no bloodline connection, there's none of that, right? And he wanted to declare that it was that who that's who the rightful ruler of, of, of our indigenous or indigene American Indians are okay this is a total um, slap in the face of our ancestors all right other than British monarch George V in the eyes of his Jamaican followers Emperor Selassie resist, resistance to Mussolini's invasion of kingdom in 1935 underscored his divine status but he still was conquered after acquiring, acquiring property Howard officially registered pinnacle as the Ethiopian Salvation Society Okay, so it has nothing to do with bloodline. This is just another corporation. Howell was born in Clarendon, a rural parish in South Central Jamaica. All places beyond Kingston are referred to as country. So before this, 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 this Howell was even around. There's no, there was no such thing as Rastafari. Okay, this is his doctrine. But Clarendon truly fits the description with brush and bush and fields of grassy sugar cane stretching the horizon. Right. Howell's uh, father was a prosperous farmer who owned his own land, okay? All right? So during this time, you know, we were uh, migrating to Panama and all that stuff to the, to the Pan to do the Pan Panama Canal, but check this out. When it seemed he was deported back to Jamaica for the reason of his uh, indictment is unclear, right? These experiences exposed Howell to Pan-Africanism as well as Marxism communism and various strands of black nationalism during his time in new york he joined fellow jamaican marcus garvey universal negro improvement association i told you man founded in 1914 but while he was clearly influenced by garvey's thinking okay i told it's a doctrine so much so that garvey is often mistakenly identified as the founder of rastafari Howells had a mixed relationship with Garvey, a Christian who later criticized the nascent Rastafari movement as a cult. Okay, so it's a cult. In December 
U.S. Congress members urged President Obama to posthumously pardon Garvey, who is considered national.